That's it. I'm done with you, Gibson. I'm switching to Thander. <laughs> Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. That's right, this is going to be the first unboxing where I unbox zero Gibsons. I'm only selling them today. We're doing all Fenders for Fender Friday. And this is kind of part of a new series or just kind of a new promise to you guys that Fender Friday... I'm going to try my best to make it actual reviews because to be honest with you guys, I'm tired of just talking about the Fender guitars. I'd rather learn about them firsthand and, you know, be able to give you my thoughts and opinions of them. So to start that off, I bought two current model Fender. I'm not sure if they're custom shop or just like high end USA. We'll have to find out. I got suspiciously good deals on these, so who knows, maybe I got scammed. Or it's a beautiful start. All right, so it looks like a, not a tweed case, but something that's supposed to look kind of like it. The aroma, it smells brand new to me. We've got like a locking combo lock, one of those crappy clasps and another one of these, which doesn't want to open. There we go. And what's on the inside? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a Rarities series Fender Stratocaster. The one that has, I think it's the Quilty Maple Top. And it's got that laser etched Fender logo. And let me tell you, that looks way cooler in photos than it does in person because it just almost disappears. But this is a, a run for 2019. I did a rock or not video on these, not ever expecting to buy these things, but it's just kind of a interesting Stratocaster. I mean, it's still a bolt on neck and everything, but what I loved about this one is the rosewood neck. I had a PRS that had that and I fell in love with that thing. So that just kind of made me go, why don't we try it out? So far, this thing's just kind of strange, but I like it. The gold pick guard with this whole golden case. I mean, it's very bright. Now that you guys know I'm not just playing around, let's see what's in this one. <laughs> because models like these, sure, they've got interesting specs, but you know, talking about them, they're just not so much fun in my opinion. I like to do the uh, history video ones, but then we don't get to tear apart and look at them. Ooh, play your first song in minutes. Redeem your code to get started. Oh, that's awesome. Three months prepaid card for Fender Play. Maybe I'll have to check that out once I start my uh, lesson series. That's kind of what I'm going to be relying on is other people's lessons videos as well as how I interpret them and how it either helped me or didn't help me. I wasn't expecting to get that on a uh, used guitar. Oh, looks like we have another one that looks like the last one. You know, I don't know which one I was looking forward to opening more because this is another one from the Rarities series. I mean, these things are about $2,500 a pop. But what I liked about this one is we also get the flamed maple fretboard, which looks really cool. It's a really tight top on it. It almost just looks like a photo. So a little bit disappointed would be my first reactions to this one. But hey, that's all right. This one has a humbucker in the bridge and it's got that uh, S1 switching. So that makes a lot more sense being able to see that in person. This one kind of has that mocha color on the back. And once again, the rosewood neck, I dig that. But now that I'm feeling it, I'm not sure if I'm digging this one as much as that PRS that I used to have. So essentially the story of how I came into these two guitars is they were listed on Reverb by a seller at like a really good price. Like such a good price, I thought it was a scam 
But then I look through his selling history to make sure if he was a legit seller or not, and he seems to have a history of just selling brand new guitars for really cheap prices. I'm wondering if he has an in with a dealer where he gets them super cheap and then he can just dump them cheap. So I definitely saved that guy in my watch list. I know he had a, a Gretsch that I even thought about buying that was a brand new model. But, you know, first inspections here, I'm not seeing anything that would say that this is like a B stock or anything. I mean, we've got some light scratches and play wear, but who knows, maybe he just needed to sell something. Or he's really good at stealing guitars from stores. <laughs> But the way I want to evolve Fender Friday is as Trade Tuesday Season 2 ends, I'm basically going to be taking the elements of that series and transferring it into Fender Friday, where I trade Fenders around. I mean, there's no end goal. It's just, you know, document as many Fenders as I think are cool. So let me know in the comment section which one you would like me to review first. We'll call this one brown and we'll call that one maple. And starting next Friday, we'll get the reviews on these guys. But until then... Let's sell those Gibsons. <laughs> We've got our 50th anniversary Flying V. You can check out this review if you happen to have missed it. It's kind of a cool little guitar. It's an abomination of specs as far as Flying Vs go with the additional contouring. Uh, you got ebony fretboard, the Super 400 inlays, the McCarty prototype logo. It's just kind of an interesting blend of specs, and you really don't see these things for as cheap as I was able to offer this one because, well, that infamous thing right there. <laughs> and, uh, like, some of the other replaced parts. It was a cool Flying V, but I kind of just view them as a collector's instrument. Not necessarily my favorite, but I like all the cool features on it. This next one is a guitar we haven't seen in a while. <laughs> so I bought this in a complete collection of all of the other Zoot Suits at the very beginning of 2018. I think it was around February or March, because I remember it was around my birthday, and it was such a happy day unboxing a complete collection of Zoot Suits. Because prior to that day, I had never actually owned one of these, but they had always intrigued me. So that morning when I found that complete collection on eBay, it's like, yes, I don't even care if I'm paying, you know, more than I should. I want to do it. So you could check out this video to see them all in the same room, but then I also individually documented them. I gave them each kind of a, a funny, cool intro to them. <laughs> That's where the intros of my channel actually started, but this one definitely took the longest to sell, like a year and a half. Maybe it's because it didn't have a proper Gibson case, but technically these things just came with gig bags anyways. I nicknamed this one the Superman SG. At this point in time, I think the Zoot Suits are still a little bit underappreciated, but you can see the values are going up on them quite significantly. So I still view them as future collectibles. And to close us out here, I got some more bubble wrap. I don't know why bubble wrap makes me so happy, but it does. So guess how much one of these spools cost me. You'll never guess the price. Did you say something around like 20, 25 bucks? Yeah, that's about what you would pay online for one of those things shipped to you. But if you're lucky enough to live close to the place and you can pick them up and not have to pay crazy shipping charges, 750, oh my goodness. Now you guys see why I prefer to use bubble wrap. If you live by a place that sells bubble wrap, definitely check with them, because this is some good stuff. 
But if you don't happen to have a place that sells bubble wrap by you, I'll leave a link in the description to this stuff. They sell them on eBay. I think it's a uh, two pack for $40. And honestly, it's still worth 20 bucks a spool. And a little bit of extra mystery here. As I was editing this video up, I decided to check out that guy's page. And lo and behold, He's got another one. It's kind of the uh, ugly Telecaster, but he seems to want a more reasonable price on it. And then I noticed, oh, I'm kicking myself. I missed the Rarities Redwood Telly. That is one I would have been interested in more so than these other ones. But there we go. This is the official announcement that I am trying to document Fender guitars too. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I mean, it's a little bit different, but maybe we'll learn stuff about Fender now and get a deeper appreciation for them. Take care.